okay good so let us start so today we are going to do problems from this section on normal extensions problems on normal extensions So let's look at the first question. So show that K is a splitting field over F for a set of polynomials in Fx if and only if K is a splitting field over F for the single polynomial F1 up to Fn. Let's write the question. That is well here uh, yeah, they're saying a splitting field over f of the polynomials <clears throat> sorry of the polynomials F1 up to Fn in Fx, I should write that in Fx if and only K is a splitting field of of the single polynomial <coughs> So the definition of a splitting field is, is that K is F adjoint the roots of these things. Is that correct? Right, but, but yeah, that will follow. That will follow from what I said. Does it follow? So let me say that, then maybe you can tell me. Let me write that. So K uh, is equal to F at joint alpha one up to alpha K where alpha I, <clears throat> I'll just say where the alphas are ha huh, right so that condition is needed yeah right you're right are roots of fi right so if i if i say this uh, i this doesn't imply that uh, this itself doesn't imply that each fi can be factored linearly with coefficients in k, this doesn't imply. If I try to say are all the roots of fi, then actually that is not well defined. All right, because whenever you say all the roots, it, it depends on the extension a priori. It, it, it depends on the extension a priori when I say all the roots. So I, yeah, so the best way to say is that each fi factors, yeah. <clears throat> and then you have to say this also, of course, but you have to say that also. So it's a good point. And uh, each, but I mean, 
but after you prove that the field extension is unique, right? Then you can say that uh, where alpha i's are all the roots of the fi's, right? Then, then, then it is. Then one can say because you can say that the unique algebraic closure and in that, but but then you have to then you have to make the definition with respect to an algebraic closure, or you have to say that I am assuming the field splitting field is unique or something. Uh, but uh, yeah, but before that, it's not. But when we are defining splitting field, you cannot say that. So it's. I think yeah, so that's why it's uh, and each fi factors linearly <clears throat> over k. Hmm. Yeah, so then uh, this of course is very easy, I suppose, right? It implies that yes. The roots are algebraic over the base. Okay. Uh, see, the first statement you make is are the roots algebraic over F? Right. I mean, splitting field exists means that they are algebraic. Uh, no? No, right. It does not. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, it is. It is not a. It is not a splitting field. I know that's right. So, no, but I did not say that. I said that because because there is a splitting field, so it is algebraic. Right. I mean, algebraic does not imply splitting field. I know that. That's fine. But I did not say that. I'm saying that because K is a splitting field, so it is algebraic. Right. But uh, but still, there is a problem. So when you. Okay. So what? Uh, so if you if you are trying to say whether the roots are algebraic over F. Right, if that is the thing. I mean, you see that, uh, what, what is the definition of uh, something being algebraic over something? Let alpha be something, let just alpha be something, and f be a field. What does it mean to say that alpha is algebraic over f? No, that, that, that's right. That's right, but even before, even before that, you have to specify where alpha belongs. And the point here is that it has to be in some extension even before this question can be raised. Otherwise, this question cannot be raised, right? I mean, you can just define alpha to satisfy. No, x minus alpha uh, may, yeah, exactly. Yeah, correct, x minus alpha. I mean, yeah, you can just uh, say that, I mean, you can just define alpha to satisfy that relation, right? Yes. <clears throat> and yeah, x minus alpha does will not, wait a minute. X minus alpha will, um, uh, no. The point is that none of it makes sense unless you say alpha belongs to some field you cannot raise the question of algebraic or transcendental, right? Once you know that alpha belongs in some field extension, then you can ask this question about algebraic or not, okay? But then when you start with a polynomial, if you start with a polynomial f in fx, 
there is actually no field extension you can create your own field extension where alpha splits where f splits and that is what you do in field theory isn't it right from day one right you, you construct an extension where alpha splits right so that construction is you can say in some way artificial right? but still it is good that uh, such an extension exists and so on all right so th these are the uh, these are the things yeah it is what it is yeah <clears throat> These are all self-evident facts. I mean, if you if one just uh, sits and asks this, asks the question to themselves, I suppose they'll just answer themselves, right? These are just uh, st straightforward facts. <clears throat> yes. So this, of course, implies that uh, let's just call this f. Okay. This implies that f factors linearly. over k, this is clear. And, uh, and the, the coefficients appearing in the factorization are precisely these alpha i's, right? And the constants in the factorization, or better to just say the roots, right? the roots of f are precisely dot 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 precisely these alpha i's right and so then by definition k is a splitting field of f right? so this is fine right there's nothing to do okay so let's uh, then move to the next question it's that problem is basically just a reminder that you know if we <clears throat> can be uh, done with a single polynomial what about what about uh, there is just a question that comes what about we have infinitely many polynomials what do you do in that case <clears throat> now in that case it's Obviously, uh, unlikely that you can uh, get a single polynomial. <clears throat> but what can you say about the splitting field? Because, of course, uh, infinitely many polynomials come. Uh, well, like last time we were doing these uh, profinite groups. So, of course, profinite groups will come from infinitely many polynomials. Splitting field of infinitely many polynomials. Because finitely many polynomials will only give you a finite extension. Right? So, you should think about this that if uh, k is the splitting field of infinitely many polynomials, then uh, how can you describe k? <laughs> can you describe k in terms of some finite, uh, in terms of finite things, and maybe taking some limit or something? Again, like the limit kind of limit we took last day. Here you may have to take something called a direct limit. So you read that book, a profinite book, a profinite groups, or you read direct limits from anywhere. So those two constructions will might help you to yeah okay so how how to describe k <clears throat> so basically you have to come you have to come up with an operation which will help you to uh, describe k in terms of finite extensions okay so think about it. You can even read it. I mean, it will be there in some books like Lang or even uh, in Morandi, if you see, it should be there if the red infinite elf extensions are there. Okay. This is very important to, to understand infinite extensions. And also try to think, why is it that infinite extensions are sort of needed, even when you are only interested in finite extensions? Okay, uh, I suppose uh, when you solve more problems, it will automatically show itself. But one should think, like, uh, even when you're just doing finite extensions, why is it that we uh, need to go to infinite extensions? <clears throat> so, but but that's probably when you meet the question, it's better. Yeah. Anyway, that's to problem two. Okay. So at KPS, splitting field of a set S of polynomials over F, 
if L is a subfield of K containing F for which each F in S splits over L, So that L is K. <clears throat> oh, so this is basically the question I was asking. Right? This is basically the question I was asking. So this so this K is just going to be yeah. So let me write the question. Let K be shooting field of of a collection S. polynomials let is it over f i suppose yeah. let l be a uh, subfield no so this is not i mean the, the answer I, I i'm looking for is to describe the splitting field in terms of finite splitting fields this is slightly different So I suppose this again just follows from definitions, right? So K is basically generated over F by these alpha I's. Yeah, maybe I should write it like this, by this alpha I's, <clears throat> where uh, each, again, each alpha I, is a root of F or some F in S. By the way, is it clear that this is true? Is it clear to you that this is true? Like, uh, clear maybe, I mean, do you feel that this is true? Not for the you can feel that, right? Yeah. Then it's just a matter of making it rigorous because it's important, like, because there are these uh, self-supporting steps that is there. There are two kinds of things. I mean, at least, you, I don't know, you can relate something like that. So when mathematics becomes more and more technical, right? So it seems like the things which, the tools that you are using are more and more less related to the problem you started with, right? Polynomial and then root and so on. It becomes more and more abstract, right? But uh, so it shouldn't be that they, the, those two things shouldn't move in two different directions, right? the facts that you're proving and the tools that you're using. Okay, so as you uh, use a tool like so suddenly we are, we are doing in, uh, infinite indexing, right? That thing, but you should get the, but you, you should get the essence, okay, that like, it's an infinite indexing, but it's just trying to capture something. 
said to capture what that it's a it's generated by all the roots. So you just write that. So that intuition has to be there. And so it's like so one piece of tool and then another piece of intuition for that tool or you know some kind of a connectedness has to be connectivity has to be there like like a braid. Okay. Otherwise it it can become actually become problematic. Okay, it can actually become problematic. So you should be careful of that. Okay. And uh, that will actually make you not afraid of using more and more uh, technical tools or whatever. And at the same time, having intuition for those tools and relating to having some toy picture of those tools, basic picture or basic example or you know, uh, your own way. Yes. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. F as a finite extension or K as a finite extension? K as a finite extension. I mean, uh, in which case, when there are uh, infinitely many polynomials or finitely many polynomials? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Yes, you cannot, it means it will not be a finite extension. That's what you're saying. That's what you think, right. Um, well, the answer is, uh, I, I understand what you're trying to say, but the answer should be no. Right? Even if there are infinitely many polynomials and the roots are all distinct, still the extension of the splitting field can still have finite degree. Okay. So the statement is, so you have a collection Fi of polynomials. Okay. Fi is a collection of polynomials. All the roots over all the Fi's are distinct from each other. Okay. There are infinitely many of them but degree of k over f is finite. It's possible. You try to make an example. Okay. Yeah. But the example will not be very, I mean, it, it, usually, the, usually the example should be very, will be very redundant as you can understand, right? There will be a lot of redundant uh, polynomials in, in, the, in that system which you will create. But nonetheless, you can create. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, this is a... You can actually create a degree one extension. So, is that right? Like, you can just take x minus n, n in n. over q. What is the splitting field of this? q. So it's degree one and then... <laughs> okay, so yeah, this is, these are the kind of things you will get. Maybe slightly more interesting, <laughs> but like till finally many steps it will be interesting. <laughs> After that it will just sort of stagnate. Root two, two times root two, three times root two. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> but yeah, it's possible. Yeah, but it will be, I mean, uh, would be interesting, would be interesting to give some, uh, then maybe it will not be very interesting, but to give some conditions under which infinitely many polynomials imply infinite extension, or basically just simply put uh, conditions under which the splitting field is infinite, has infinite degree. Right? Give some condition under which the splitting field has infinite degree. 
of course, one condition has to be that there has there will be infinitely many polynomials, right? But uh, can you give uh, some other interesting conditions? How do you write it? Of course, I can give you some stupid conditions, which I will just call stupid. I mean, for me, uh, like I can just say that uh, each fi is irreducible over the splitting field of uh, f1 up to fi minus 1. Right, like f2 is irreducible over the splitting field of f1. And f3 is irreducible over the splitting field of f1 times f2. I can say that, but that condition is, it is sufficient, but it is really a stupid, I mean, that is, is just tautological, right? That obviously implies the degree will keep growing. And so the degree will be infinite. Right? But can you say something in a more like interesting? So what does it mean now that mathematics it will think now, what does it mean to say something more interesting? I mean, in this situation, what I feel is maybe you have to, you have to put yourself in a certain uh, type of polynomials originating from a certain source. So you have to put yourself in a certain uh, uh, type of extensions. I mean, means that, means that you, have to, you have to look at a certain, uh, in a certain direction to find some interesting sufficient, because in general, there is no suffi interesting sufficient condition, it seems, uh, other than these conditions, which I kind of said, which are not, not eliminating. It doesn't tell you anything that you did not know, isn't it? I mean, it tells you, it, it right? So you can write a few more lines, but it doesn't really tell you anything which you did not know. So, so that's why the thing now here is to look at a certain class of extensions, maybe abelian extension whose Galva group is abelian, you know, something like that, right? And then maybe there you can, you know, say something, we can write a, write a sufficient condition which involves the language of that area. Maybe if you're looking at abelian groups and maybe you say something about order or something, right? Or <clears throat> I think this, if you, if you say, oh no, sorry. No. But yeah, you understand my point, right? That you have to go to somewhere where there are some uh, statements in that theory itself. Okay then only you can make some interesting uh, sufficient conditions right? which would which will be proof will require some knowledge of that theory otherwise there's not much you can do here it seems you understand my point in general you cannot say anything so this is what the mathematicians are always struggling with right generality but then uh, finding a certain direction in which they want to generalize so that the statements they prove are challenging whether they are eliminating or useful that we don't but at least it should be challenging to prove <laughs> okay yeah and then of course what is challenging that also one can think if it is challenging in the sense of playing sudoku then maybe it is not very challenging right I and mean, if it is just something which is like you know challenging in the sense of calculating large numbers then that's not interesting here i suppose there is no option of calculating lot of numbers but there could be, you could give some condition which involves a lot of, you know, combinatorially, <laughs> what do you say, overgrown uh, thing, like just unnecessarily complicated things where you just have to, it will be difficult, but it will be a lot of manual labor. Like it's like playing Sudoku. Like you have to just, so oh, this will nice, is this year, so it will, then it will work. People are stuck. I mean, a lot of mathematicians are stuck like that, right? If you see a lot of papers and all, they are, not really trying to do they just stuck in something some operation and then they are just proving some facts about it so it's easy to prove but the is the only difficulty lies in you know, sort of uh, uh, like staring more <laughs> with more intent and that that can also be a thing see so it be someone has to be very like uh, careful and uh, uh, in some sense yeah uh, yeah evaluate very clear carefully the Essence. Like so far, what we have done today, nothing. If you think about it, right? I mean, just think. Right? This is just just writing the definition. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's continue. I think I should. Okay, so let's continue. So each uh, 
is a root. Okay. So this is like the definition and uh, each alpha dot 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 each alpha is split linearly. Now if you take L, right? Take L. So each every F splits in L. Every F splits in L. Uh, what does that imply? So the given hypothesis implies that L contains the splitting field of K. Sorry, splitting field of uh, the S. Is that uh, correct? Right, I mean, because this is the right thing to write and also it's correct, right? Because the splitting, because the splitting field is also characterized by the smallest uh, field in which it splits. And of course the definitions which, I, which we wrote here also are satisfied because L will contain these alpha i's and it will, these are do split. And so it will contain a splitting field. Okay, so it contains, it means it contains K, but then it's, uh, it's a subfield, subfield of K. So it's also contained in K and so it's K. <clears throat> Nothing, we just <laughs> spend some time but we really just, <laughs> so it's like that. But anyways, and... now let's be a bit careful. Let's uh, look at problem. So I'm looking at problem three. If uh, K is a splitting field of S, splitting field of S over F, show that K is also a splitting field of S over L. So can we skip problem three? <clears throat> that is, you would have seen that, right? So now I'm looking at problem four. Yeah. Let K be an algebraically closed field extension of F. Show that the algebraic closure of F in K is an algebraic closure of F. Right. Yeah, so here we need to just define things carefully. This might also be easy. So yeah, let K be algebraically closed. Uh, field extension <clears throat> of F. Uh, just a point here. So the notion of algebraically closed does not require uh, it to be, um, does not require the mention of a uh, subfield, right? Algebraically closed is a notion which exists on its own. Right, you can just take a field K and say whether, and you can make the sentence whether it is algebraically closed or not. It's a valid state sentence. Is that right? Okay. <clears throat> right. So you can do that, but here they are saying it's uh, yeah. let L be an algebraic uh, closure of F in K show L is an algebraic closure 
of F. Right. So uh, what is the definition of uh, this algebraic closure of a field? <clears throat> so, so this is a field extension where, so this is the splitting field of FX. Is that is that correct? That uh, this means that L is equal to splitting. <coughs> sorry, splitting field of the collection of polynomials. All the polynomials. Is that is that the definition which is used in the book? You have not seen algebraic closure. <clears throat> so, what is your definition? Now you can think of Q and its algebraic closure, and then you can give a definition. Think. Okay. Let's uh, let's look at the book. Uh, you should have should have read it, but fine. My in sense that uh, then uh, how much have you read from the book? Uh, chapter two. But uh, what do you mean? This is chapter two only. Section one point two. Wait. Oh, that was automorphisms. Oh, so you, after that you have not read. Okay, but uh, that you should have read. Okay, that's that's what it is. <clears throat> yeah, so when I scroll, do you see if I'm scrolling, does it scroll? It, it, okay, okay, good, good. Yeah, so please read this section, right? You should have, uh, means uh, should complete it because one by one, right? I mean, you have to just read like maybe two def definitions in a day or something and then think about it, yeah. Anyways, yeah, so let's go to algebraic closure. So if we're just looking for a definition, algebraic closure. So we have proved the existence of splitting fields for finite sets of polynomials, what about infinite sets? Um, suppose that K is a splitting field over F of the set of all set of all non-constant polynomials over F. We do not yet know that such a field exists, but we will show da 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 da. So this is a lemma, lemma, lemma definition. Okay. K satisfies the equivalent conditions of lemma 3.10. Then K is said to be algebraically closed. So let's see what it is. Right? There are no algebraic extensions of K other than itself. That makes sense, the, the, the statement, right? What it means. There are no finite extensions, blah, blah, blah. if L is a field extension, blah, blah, blah. every field extends. Is this fine? Is the definition of algebraically closed? Now, if K is an algebraic extension of F and is algebraically closed, right? Then K is said to be algebraic closure of F. Right, so then this definition is slightly different. <clears throat> okay, it's slightly different from the definition which I wrote. So do you, but uh, do you see that they are the same definitions? Let's see. Splitting field of fx. Okay, L is a splitting field of fx. And uh, there, the definition of algebraic closure. Of F. So this is a field L. 
such that L is right algebraic over F and uh, did they say it's a splitting field? Oh no, they're saying it's just algebraically closed. And which of, uh, yeah. And L is algebraically closed. So are these uh, two definitions the same? So if L is a, so if you take the official definition, Then, so uh, let's take this, call this L prime. So there is one thing, whether this object exists, right? And, uh, is it algebraic? That is the thing. Okay. So I would say that is a second non-trivial step in field theory. Because when you have finitely many polynomials or equivalently a single polynomial, then you know that, uh, that uh, an algebraic splitting field exists, a finite extension exists. Correct? But when you take an infinite collection of polynomials, it is not clear that a splitting field, which is algebraic, which is an algebraic extension. Uh, oh, no, it is clear, right? I mean, if, if, sorry, I mean, if splitting field exists, then it is algebraic over fx, so it, over f. Do you see that claim? So this is, this is my claim. Maybe you should prove this later. So if splitting field exists, so first my first question is, is the definition of splitting field clear? I mean, splitting field of fx, is the definition clear? Okay, because fx is just a collection of polynomials. Right? So we have defined it. And then it is algebraic. Of course, you should just complete the statement maybe algebraic over F, right? algebraic extension of F. Okay. This statement uh, should be clear. Means you should be able to prove this. And the idea just is that it is generated by algebraic elements. It's not a finite extension, of course, necessarily. It will never be, I think. But, yeah. Fine. So, do you believe this statement? Is it believable? Is it convincing? You should, then you can just, you can prove it. I suppose you might have been, when I say you can prove it, I it's also possible that you have already proved it. So then it's fine. But yeah, I mean, since I don't know, so I'm just, yeah. So, so this is fine. Now, uh, what do we have? Just, we are just taking simple steps. So now we have that this L contains L prime. Right, because it's algebraically closed, which means that the roots of fx will lie in L. Right, that's the definition of algebraically closed, that every polynomial splits. But then, is L a splitting field of fx?
So it is algebraic over F. And it is algebraically closed. So it is algebraically closed means every polynomial over LX splits in L. Is that correct? So every F in LX splits in L. We have this extra looking thing. Okay. Do you agree with this? This is the from the definition I'm only saying. No, in LX, it, it implies that in L dashed also, but every polynomial in in LX also splits in L. That's because it's algebraically closed. Yes. So how do you prove that these two definitions are same? Um, Or maybe is it because in L prime you are only asking for uh, the polynomials over F to split, you are not asking for anything more to begin with.
Yeah, I think that these are not the same definitions. Okay, so L prime is kind of the only the first step, it seems. That would be my guess, that this is only the first step. You're taking the polynomials in Fx and uh, you know, attaching their roots to get L prime. But then the new field you get, you can consider polynomials over that, right? And they may not split automatically. So you have to further continue the process. Right, yeah, okay. Because uh, if to get an algebraically closed field, you may have to do that, okay? So I think these are not the same definition. These are not equivalent. Yeah, and uh, this definition of algebraic closure is probably then, yeah, let's look at the book, yeah? Let's look at the book and see. Yes, sorry, I left meeting. So you, you understand the problem, right? Where are we facing the problem? In these two definitions, right? Yes, so I hope you can see the screen, otherwise tell me. Yeah, so of course uh, they have defined uh, algebraic closure like this, an algebraic extension of F that is algebraically closed, okay, which will contain the thing I said, but it, it is not, may not be equal. So for example, if you look at C, then that is the, uh, C is algebraically closed and that's, the, it will be proved in section. If A is, uh, A is algebraic over Q, okay, oh. But then you see here that uh, this one is algebraically closed. If you look at this A that they have defined, right? This is just the splitting field of Qx. Uh, do you agree with that? Right? This A is just a splitting field of Qx because just simply take a polynomial in Qx, right? Then uh, it will have a root in C. So it means that it is algebraic over Q and that is in A, right? So it's a splitting field of uh, Qx. And if you, and also conversely, if you take any A, if you take anything in A, which is what I should say, if you take anything in A, it is algebraic over Q. So it is a root. So A is generated by the roots only, right? So this is splitting field. And here you see it's actually algebraically closed. That is their claim. Okay. So uh, can we just prove this, that this is algebraically closed? Yeah, this is algebraically closed. Do you see that? And the reason is, and the reason is that if it is, I mean, if it is not algebraically closed, then it has an algebraic extension. Right? That's the other definition, right? That algebraically closed uh, must have an algebraic extension. And that will imply uh, that that uh, element in the algebraic extension, algebraic over A, is actually algebraic over Q because, you know, algebraic is a transitive relation, right? So A is algebraic over Q, but then it is in, but then it will be in A only. So it's algebraically closed. Okay. So, so that, so then this thing is algebraically closed. 
yes okay then why is it that my definition here is not uh, is not good why does it not give you equality let me let me let's go back to the whiteboard and try to see so whatever i have added i want to just show that i get an algebraically closed field right so show to show that l prime is algebraically closed right let's let's just try to show this So if not, then it has an algebraic extension, right? So, I mean, there is L double prime, uh, which is an algebraic extension. And this is algebraic. And of course, you know that this is algebraic. Okay. Now you, uh, right. So now if you take an alpha in L double prime, right, is algebraic over F, right? This implies that alpha is a root of sum P in F, Fx, right? Which implies that alpha is actually in L prime because it's a splitting field, L, L prime is a splitting field. Fine. Yeah, uh, is it fine? Okay, right. Uh, yeah, yeah. So this this means that uh, it's algebraically closed, right? And then uh, that basically means that this is equal. Okay. Yeah. L is also an algebraic extension. And uh, algebraically closed means it cannot have any algebraic extension. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, so these two definitions are the same, in fact. Yeah. You see, that is what we are getting. It's sort of I will think about this. It's sort of uh, contrary to what I have learned, uh, what I have believed for a long time about certain things. Uh, but it seems correct, no? Seems correct. You can check it. Try to write a more elegant uh, proof for this, maybe. So, what do you think was the key? The key is that if you have an algebraically closed. Uh, uh, Yeah, that so this is the thing, right? That uh, algebraically closed field has no algebraic extension. That's obvious, right? But if it doesn't have algebraic extension, then it is algebraically closed. You see my point, that these two are equivalent, right? And that is the direction which is used. That's the that's the thing that we used. And it's basically, basically it comes down to this, I suppose, that uh, composition of algebraic is algebraic. Okay, yeah. So anyways, so this is what it is. Maybe I will uh, leave this problem for you to do. Okay, because we have kind of done the next one also. So, is that fine? Yeah, it's fine, yeah. So, I hope you will find the time